Hey there everybody, time to physics once again. In this video we are learning about projectile motion. What a projectile is, is it's an object that has been projected into a gravitational field. So basically something that's moving forward and is in the Earth's gravity. Basically what that means, it's got an initial horizontal velocity and is in free fall. So we've studied at the beginning of the year things that are moving forward and we've studied things that are in free fall. Now we're going to do something that's doing both at the same time. An example of a projectile will be a baseball after you have hit it. A simpler example that we've already seen is a marble that rolls off the edge of a table. Those are things that are moving forward and are in free fall. They're falling while moving forward. Things that are not projectiles, things like airplanes, and skydivers. Those are not projectiles because they're things that are not in free fall. So projectile doesn't mean anything that is in the air or that is quote unquote flying. It means things that are moving forward and free falling. Keyword there being free fall. So let's talk about the forces on a projectile. The only force that acts on a projectile is its weight. That would be gravity. And so drawing a free body diagram for a projectile is simple. It's only got the force of gravity pulling it down. But wait, Mr. Mark, didn't we just say that a projectile moves forward? Yeah, and I was not lying about that. And then you might say that that means that there should be something pushing it forward. But that is not true. So if you thought that, the thing that you're forgetting is that things that are already moving like a projectile is already moving, naturally continue in motion. That's Newton's first law. So it doesn't have to have anything pushing it forward to continue moving forward. It naturally continues moving forward on its own. The other thing that we know is that it moves forward at a constant velocity. And that's important because it allows us to analyze the motion of a projectile. So projectiles will accelerate downward due to gravity and they move forward at a constant velocity because there's no forces pushing or pulling them going forward. So let's kind of draw out a picture of the motion of a projectile. And we'll use the example of a marble rolling off of a table because we're familiar with it. So here's my table, here's my marble, and it's moving forward at some velocity v. The initial velocity of my projectile, which is v, is in the horizontal direction. It's to the right rather than up and down. So instead of calling it just v, I'm going to call it vx, as in the x component of its velocity. So as my projectile continues to move forward and then accelerates downward, it's going to have the same forward velocity at all those different points. So it moves forwards with constant velocity, and again, we need to be able to explain that it's because there's no, nothing pushing it forward or pulling it backwards. Now it's going to be accelerating downward due to its weight. So it starts off with an initial vertical component of velocity, which is zero, and then as time goes on and it travels farther downward, that velocity gets bigger. Again because gravity is making it accelerate. So when I drew this picture, I drew this gap smaller than this gap, which is again smaller than this gap, because it's accelerating. It's going faster as it moves down. So to kind of summarize this into a graph, the forward motion or horizontal motion of a projectile it's just constant velocity motion. So motion with constant velocity, the position versus time graph is a straight line. The velocity versus time graph is a horizontal or flat line. The vertical motion, well that's something that is in free fall, meaning it's accelerating, and it's accelerating downward. So my position versus time graph would be a parabola, my velocity versus time graph would be a straight line sloping downward, starting at a velocity of zero in this case. 
And later on, we're going to look at the more um, general case of when we launch a projectile upwards to begin with. But for right now, we'll just worry about situations where the initial vertical velocity is zero. We'll call those horizontally launched projectiles. So let's see if we can relate the two direction the motion together. The thing that we have to realize is that the vertical motion of a projectile does not depend in any way on the horizontal motion of the projectile. In other words, the forward velocity doesn't affect the downward velocity. So that's another important thing to remember. So if we can understand how the forces work, then that should help us understand why this must be true. So here's a very common physics question, and one that we explored in lab. If we have a marble that rolls off the edge of a table, and then at the same time we drop an identical marble from the same height, so something that might look like that, which marble reaches the ground first? Most people that don't know what they're doing will tell you this one reaches the ground first because it's going faster but it's not going faster up and down, it's only going faster forward. So if we kind of sketch out a picture of what that might look like, draw the ground. When we first release the uh, marble that's dropped, it's going to travel that vertical distance. In the same amount of time, our other marble, the one that is launched forward, would travel the same vertical distance. Another split second passes, the marble that's dropped covers a little bit more distance, but the marble that has been rolled off the table covers the exact same vertical up and down distance. And same thing is true as they reach the ground. So those two marbles will reach the ground at the same time, and we should have seen that and heard that during our lab because both marbles start with the same vertical initial velocity. They both have the same vertical acceleration. And so since they have the same initial velocity acceleration and they both cover the same distance up and down, they're going to reach the ground at the same time. So there's no difference between the vertical motion of the projectile and the vertical motion of something that is dropped, that is in free fall. The only difference is the one that's in projectile motion moves forward. But the forward part doesn't affect the up and down part. That's an important thing to remember. So let's look at an example. Let's take that same marble, and let's suppose for a second that it was moving at 4 meters per second when it rolled off the top of the table. And then let's, dis or, uh, let's assume that the table is about 1.2 meters tall, we want to know how far away it lands. So we're going to analyze this and solve it the same way that we solve any kinematics problem. We're going to start out by listing our givens and our unknowns. Because our marble is moving in two directions, we're going to break our unknowns up into the forward motion, or x, horizontal, and the vertical motion, or y, or vertical, up and down, rather. So I would recommend that you make your givens and unknowns look kind of like a table. So the y information would be the information we need for something that's accelerating. The x information, we just need stuff for something that's moving at a constant velocity. So there wouldn't be an acceleration or a final velocity or initial velocity. There's just going to be positions, constant velocity, and time. So let's kind of start interpreting what's in the question. The 4 meters per second, that's a horizontal velocity, so that's going to be my vx. The 1.2 meters is a height, so that's going to be my y. And then to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to make my initial y 0. So we're going to go from 0 to 1.2. This thing is not moving up or down when it comes off the table, so its initial vertical velocity would be 0. And then it's in free fall, so its acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second squared. You might ask yourself, well, does it doesn't need to be negative. And the answer is the way that we've defined my coordinate system, we're starting from 0, and then we're moving to 1.2 meters, 
And so that means we're moving in the positive direction. So my acceleration can be positive. I would say that our initial um, horizontal position is zero. And then the final position is my question mark. That's the thing that we are looking for. And so I know that when the motion is constant velocity, I can use that equation, which is the very first equation we learned this year. And since my initial position is zero, then I can just say my final position is the velocity times the time. The only thing is I don't know what the time is. But time is the thing that links the x and y axis of motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a blank for t on both sides. We've got to find the time, in this case, before we can find the final position, because that's the thing in my equation here that's still missing. So looking at my um, y side again, I don't care what the final y velocity is, and so that's going to help me figure out what equation would let me use, or would let me find the time, rather. And so I would find the time that it took to reach the floor by using the 1 half at squared equation. Now notice instead of x's, I wrote y's. Y's are just positions like x. The only difference is y's typically go up and down. It started at rest, so the initial velocity is 0. And we said the initial position is 0, so that simplifies our equation a little bit. And then we just got to solve that for t. And so when you do that, we should get something like t equals the square root of 2y over a. And so substituting in the numbers would give us a time of about 0.49 seconds. So almost right at half a second. So I'm going to fill that into my table. And then I'm going to substitute that for the t in my constant velocity equation for my x direction. And so that would look something like that. Get something around 2 meters for the distance that this marble rolls. And so basically what we've done is we've just combined motion with constant velocity, which is the horizontal motion, with free fall motion, which is the vertical stuff. And so by finding how long it took to reach the floor, which is something we've done, we can substitute into a constant velocity equation and figure out how far it's going to go in that time. That's kind of the name of the game here. So to kind of summarize what we've learned so far, projectiles move in two directions, horizontal and vertical. Since there's no forces in the horizontal direction, then the horizontal velocity is constant. It's nice. It's easier to deal with. The weight pulls it down still, and so the vertical velocity is going to be changing due to gravity. Vertically, it's free-falling. The horizontal and vertical motions of a projectile do not affect each other, and so it doesn't matter how fast it's moving forward, it's still going to fall at the same rate. And then all of our motion equations are still valid for the vertical motion. Just anywhere in the equation we see an x, we'll write a y instead. Everything else that we've learned in our kinematics unit remains the same. So, projectile motion is kind of important. If you want to learn how to shoot three-pointers, then you have to have a pretty good idea of how a projectile behaves. And so we'll do some more practice in class, and then later on we'll like calculate how to shoot a free throw. Until then, ta-ta!